Welcome back to the Crypto Father channel. I am the Crypto Father and today is the 1st of April. It's my birthday. Happy freaking birthday to me. It's a Monday. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a good way to start the week or not, but it is what it is. I was listening in to uh, the debate between Peter Schiff and uh, Raul Paul just the other day. It's a three hour long debate on Tom Below's uh, channel and with 1.2 million views. And I came to the conclusion that uh, Peter Schiff is, I don't know, I failed the words. I don't want to say misinformed, uh, hard-headed. He's definitely hard-headed. I guess he's an intelligent guy, but I, I, I've gotten a vibe from him similar to Andrew Tate. I had a talk about Andrew Tate the other day with someone, and the question came up of what happened to Andrew Tate? Where did he go? So I remember maybe a year ago, Andrew Tate was on every page of every social media outlet. And, uh, you know, the, he was on the discussion table of whether, you know, good or bad. And 50% of people decided that he was the new messiah. And 50% decided that he was an absolute scum. And uh, I think both sides are right on the topic of Andrew Tate. I think he's just a very confident guy who says what he thinks and 50% of the stuff he says makes sense and 50 doesn't. He's just an average dude who's not afraid to say what he thinks. And there is nothing special about Andrew Tate and there is nothing different about Andrew Tate other than his overconfidence which leads him to speak out on whatever he thinks without fear of repercussions. That's basically the deal with Andrew Tate. And I look at Peter Schiff being of similar magnitude. Basically, the debate was, uh, this was a debate on Bitcoin, on the validity, uh, you know, feasibility and uh, usefulness of Bitcoin. And Peter Schiff, of course, is of the belief that Bitcoin is a nothing, that it's completely useless. Raw Paul obviously uh, stands on the other side of that debate. But the biggest point, so there was a qu one question by posted by Tom Liu. Uh, that was trying he was trying to moderate the debate um, and the question was what would it take for you to change your mind on Bitcoin and so Rob Paul basically said if the network went down network usage went down to zero and companies began to to not use Bitcoin and basically if the blockchain was losing its usage then he would reconsider his position and he would question whether the validity of Bitcoin is still there, whether Bitcoin is still a usable asset or if it's still usable. Peter Schiff, on the other hand, was not really able to come up with any reasons for him to change his mind. He was very hard headed, very stubborn about his position on Bitcoin, and he continued to say that it's completely useless. At some point, at some point, some of his arguments made absolutely no sense and they were very deprecating. They were they were they, they were proving that he was wrong he basically said something about money i don't remember the exact quote but he compared he said that money currently money has value because people assigned value to it while bitcoin doesn't have any value because it doesn't do anything and his arguments were completely ridiculous like he said we have we assigned value to money therefore it has value because it's not backed by any gold Back in the day when uh, US dollar was backed by gold, it had actual value. But now, the only reason why US dollar or any form of money has value is because people have agreed that it does have value. It's just paper printed with numbers on it and it's backed by the governments. While Bitcoin doesn't have any backing, he said. It's not backed by governments. But he completely misses the point of saying that Bitcoin is backed by millions of people. And yes, it's speculative right now. People, you know, he calls it the greater fool's theory, saying that it only has value because people buy it because they think somebody else will buy it for even more than what they bought it for. And they'll be able to sell it for more. Well, yes, Peter, therefore it has value in that sense. It has assigned value. People have assigned value to it. The reason why it's not backed by governments is because governments cannot control it. I mean, it's that simple. US money is controlled by the governments. It's printed willy-nilly by central banks um, at the disposal of governments. 
which work in cahoots basically and so they get to print us dollars en masse and the reason why they get to do it is because they took the gold standard off so that this would allow them to print money en masse because when money was on the gold standard when us dollar was backed by gold the governments were not able to print willy-nilly uh the the supply of the us dollar was capped based on how much gold there was if if the supply of gold was increased then they could have increased the supply of money but that wasn't sitting well with them because they weren't able to print as much as they wanted to and they couldn't you know purchase the things that they wanted to purchase and so they took the us dollar off the gold standard to allow them to print as much of it as they wanted bitcoin on the other hand is not they can't control bitcoin and so they're not happy with it and so they will never back bitcoin the way currency will be backed the the, the way fiat is backed but that doesn't mean that people are not backing it actually lots of people many people are backing bitcoin and so it has value not to mention the fact that the whole energy usage and mining and the equipment and all that stuff adds value to bitcoin itself and so i found peter schiff's arguments to be um unsound full of holes and uh half the time he was making arguments for things that were supported by the governments which like a money us dollar you know and and the idea of having assigned value are exactly the same for the us dollar and bitcoin but of course he doesn't see that and so i find his arguments to be just like those of andrew tate very uh, a very outgoing man a very unhindered person but not very sound of argument he basically was you know confidently spewing his truths without realizing that he was actually contributing to um to the truths of the opposing side which was funny so uh with that said let's have a look at a bunch of uh, articles so he, he, peter schiff economist warning to ignorant people young people preferring bitcoin uh because it's better to prefer you know his standpoint is that you should invest in gold and uh, the stock market i guess some companies whatever that pay him dividends or the real estate right the real estate market uh and and uh He's basically saying that anybody investing into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is uh, is stupid. Despite the fact that Bitcoin has gone up to seventy thousand dollars, you know, over the whatever fourteen years, he still remains pessimistic and he sees no value in Bitcoin. He, I guess, he's of the mind that blockchain itself is a thing, but Bitcoin is not because it doesn't exist and. What I find interesting is that, you know, you could you could argue for the existence of software. I mean, it doesn't exist. Basically, Bitcoin is a new form of software. It's something that was created and people are still coming to grasp because it has so much potential. It could serve as money, as a currency. It's a, it could serve as a store of value. It could serve as a software on which things can be built. And so it's going to take a while, I think a bit longer. It's still, you know, than 14 years. It's still in its very early stages, I would say, uh, because just like renewable energy, there simply isn't enough money being put into it to create, you know, proper development. And so that's why the development of these things takes longer. Why am I seeing these advertisements of shoes? I was trying to read the article. Addressing the trend economist uh, and Bitcoin skeptic Peter Schiff has warned young people that their preference for the digital setting over gold could have consequences in the future. Yes, it could, but it could also have consequences for gold. What if, what if, what if in the next decade or so, we discover that there is another metal that is, that is more useful than gold? What if? And useful and gold becomes equivalent to silver and it loses all of its value what if will it happen we don't know could it happen well yeah it could it's the same with bitcoin so um you know his position on bitcoin is completely meh like i said andrew tate level overconfident and not very foolproof and his type of personality is the kind i think from what it seems like that even if bitcoin is adopted and even if it does reach all-time highs and, uh, you know, it does get adopted by the institutions and governments even, 
he would still say that Bitcoin was the wrong choice because he will have missed on the boat. He will have uh, he will have to admit that he was wrong and he's not going to do it. So he will always remain skeptical. I think that's the kind of personality he is. He has. Here's why record level US debt will propel Bitcoin to greater heights, according to Strike CEO Jack Mullers. Another fallacy of his argument is that he continues comparing Bitcoin to gold, which is not necessarily the same thing. I don't know. People keep saying that Bitcoin is digital gold. And again, it's not necessarily the same thing. I don't know why people got stuck on comparing it to digital gold. It's got so much more than that. The CEO of Lightning Network Wallet Strike says the US government's rapid debt accumulation will be the catalyst to send Bitcoin to greater heights. In a new interview with Bloomberg Technology, Jack Myers Mahler says the United States has no way of paying off its record high of $34 trillion debt. That's essentially it. They would have to print $34 trillion to pay off this debt and they can't. So there is there are bubbles, there are uh, rate hikes, there is shrinkage and all that stuff. And this is why there is inflation and the US dollar is going to, into the gutters. While Bitcoin will always be at 21 million. Plus or minus. More minus. Because there will never be plus. According to Mahler, he sees the government eventually turning on the money printers and issuing more dollars to meet its financial obligations. Our government is in debt. Traditionally, if I owed you $20, I'd have to, two options. I'd have to uh, default on that. The other is to, I could pay it back. Those are classically the two options that anyone in debt has, right? Uh, now the government, because this, they centrally plan to control our currency, unfortunately has a third and that's they can print more money devalue the debt that they have and that they owe and allocate more capital to themselves so our government can't default. With more dollars in the system, Mallers believes that the surplus of fiat currency will find its way into assets with a limited supply like Bitcoin. And all these people who are saying Bitcoin is crap, they are the same people who are putting money into Bitcoin. Uh, believe it or not, they, they're closet cases. They're probably sitting on the lines uh, and just hiding it from everybody, even from themselves. Meet Roland, a Brazilian city that is adopting Bitcoin. I think somebody was saying uh, that this year we'll see another city, major city that's going to be uh, adopting Bitcoin. Maybe Roland is not a major city, but on March 30th, the local affiliate of the largest and most influential open television station in Brazil talked about a significant Bitcoin adoption going on in Rolante, a small town in the south of the country. Where is Rolante? Rolante is a small town in Brazil, over 21,000 population, port of Rio Grande. What is happening with the Brazilian city Rolante that adopted Bitcoin? On the note, the RBS report mentions a recent two-day Bitcoin festival. The event moved a $300,000 or 60000 in payments volume using Bitcoin, according to the reporter. Sorry, R, I guess, Rolante dollars. More over 40% of Rolante's merchants accept Bitcoin as payment while services in the health sector are starting to do so. Edson Reichert, I'm so horrible with reading names, a store owner commented on the experience. We ask in our daily financial transactions that what is the means of payment if it is cash, credit card, paycheck and now we have the option to ask if it will be in Bitcoin. Another merchant, Anderson Reichert, explained that Bitcoin adoption has attracted tourists to Rolante. In the meantime, the local population is still discovering what Bitcoin is and how to use Bitcoin for payments. Cases like this in Rolante are part of the original vision of Bitcoin as peer-to-peer -peer electronic car system, showing that organic adoption of cryptocurrencies is possible. As of writing, Bitcoin was changing hands by around 70,000 ranging in this level since March 26th. Now, this is all nice and good right now because Bitcoin is kind of stable and it is boring at 70,000, but we'll see how that goes. But if it did stabilize, man, if it stayed, then people, I guess, would be happy. Uh, but I mean, a Satoshi is a Satoshi. It doesn't matter what the value. If people will begin, begin to trade in cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin only and they completely ignored the value, the fiat, then it wouldn't matter. A thousand Satoshi would be a thousand Satoshi. And if there was no fiat value attached to it, then it wouldn't really matter. But 
Uh, this kind of proves Peter Schiff wrong in saying that it does nothing. Apparently, Bitcoin does something. Bitcoin tapping into a $84 trillion market adoption now overwhelming. Billionaire Mike Novograd says this is trillion. Last time I made a guff, uh, million, billion, trillion. Yeah, $84 trillion. Galaxy Digital Chief Executive Mike Novograd believes that Bitcoin now has access to an $84 trillion market following the uh, approval of Bitcoin uh, BTC spot market exchange traded funds. He also says that ETF salesmen will have no problem selling Bitcoin to participants of the 84 trillion market due to the mountain of debt accumulated by the US government. Right now adoption is way overwhelming because we've just tapped into a new market. So here are the new num the numbers. There's 84 trillion of wealth uh, owned by the US baby boomers. Baby boomers are broadly 60 to 80 years old. They broadly invest through retire registered investment advisors. You call your broker or uh, at Dean Witter or Morgan Stanley or Jay Edwards and say, hey, what's my portfolio? Put a little bit there here. Uh, that is the ETF process and it has just started. A lot of the smaller platform regional brokers have been buying, but a lot of the big platform like Morgan Stanley, they're still not selling it. They are going to, they're getting prepared to, you can buy it on their platform, but their salesmen aren't selling it. One thing I've learned about Bitcoin, it's always sold. It's not bought. Somebody sits down and explains it to you. What's the macro story of Bitcoin? It's relatively simple. Our government can't keep its pants on and is spending too much money. When you spend more money than you take in, you depreciate your currency. Here's just another example of, uh, Bitcoin usage. Uh, if more money goes into the spot Bitcoin ETFs through the means of, uh, I don't know, retirement savings, then that's another usage that's being added. And it's not speculative. If people believe that, hey, my value, the value of my money is safer in uh, an asset like Bitcoin, then that proves to be useful. And you can call it whatever you want, but it does something. And this is it. And the thing with Peter Schiff is he doesn't understand digital age. Uh, I think back to my point on programs and software to say that a software doesn't exist because it's just a code on the internet and I don't see it. I don't have physical. It's not tangible in the sense that I can't touch it like money or gold. It doesn't nullify its existence. The thing that Peter Schiff says is absolutely ridiculous. And it's simply because it's something beyond his grasp. He's an old dinosaur uh, and he doesn't understand technology. And for the digital age, for the people who are living now in the digital age uh the younger generation my kids your kids will be the ones who are going to be benefiting mostly from it so um a guy like peter schiff and uh warren buffett they don't understand it they don't grasp it they live in a different reality they live in a different world and it, in the world of digitized asset is far beyond them it's like trying to comprehend infinity they just can't do it. They can't grasp the idea of something that isn't physically present having value. Hey there, America. It's me, Shrinkflation. This is an interesting uh, title. Easter eggs are more expensive and smaller this year. Uh, Joe Biden criticizes snack companies for reducing product sizes, but keeping prices the same in his state of the union address i think joe biden is uh re of retirement age and the fact that he's still walking must speak volumes to to the types of drugs that people can be fed to keep them up upright walking kind of most of the time when they should be uh sitting in in wheelchairs or or sitting in chairs and enjoying you know their evening tv dramas uh did you notice something weird about your Easter eggs this year? <laughs> yep, they're not just hitting your wallet harder, but seem to have been on a diet too. Basically, companies are trying to keep the profit margin the same while reducing the sizes of the stuff that they sell. Because uh, if they kept things the same size as they did, they would obviously have to increase prices because everything is getting more expensive because the US dollar is losing value and because the government keeps printing more of it. So it all makes sense uh it sucks it's a sad reality but that's what inflation is and that's what's happening the portions are getting smaller because the value 
because it takes more money to create these portions to package them and so companies in order to maintain the same prices so people don't freak out don't lose their minds uh, they start to reduce the sizes that they serve and that makes a lot more sense because you know if, if, if companies began to increase prices then obviously uh, companies would have to uh, employers would have to increase prices as well to kind of match it because i mean if everything goes up in price people will start going on strikes people will demand higher wages in order to be able to afford the same things that they were and they, so now people can afford the same things just in smaller quantities and maybe that's not a bad thing Maybe it's not a bad thing. Eating less for the same price may be a good thing rather than uh, paying more for for the same amount of food. Maybe it's not a bad thing. Maybe it's healthy. Maybe it's a healthy way. $677 trillion, no, billion dollars added to US national debt. $677 trillion, my goodness. That's something we've got to, for, uh, we got to look forward to, I think, in the future. 677 billion dollars added to u.s national debt in three months as blackrock ceo warned situation more urgent than i can ever remember even larry fink has changed his tune and he's become a hardcore supporter of bitcoin and uh, peter schiff just can't seem to get past his uh inhibitions there the u.s government just added more than half a trillion dollars to its balance sheet in three months data from uh, the treasury department's debt of the penny uh, database shows the national debt rose from 33 trillion uh, to 34.5 33.8 to 34.5 uh, on March 27th an increase of 677 billion the CEO of the world's largest asset management firm BlackRock says the mounting pile of debt matters in a new letter to shareholders Larry Fink breaks down the state of America's balance sheet in America the situation is more urgent than I can ever remember. Since the start of the pandemic, the US has issued roughly 11.1 trillion of new debt and the amount is only part of the issue. There's also the interest rate the treasury needs to pay on it. Three years ago, the rate on a 10-year treasury bill was under 1%, but as I write this, it's over 4%. And that 3% point increase is very dangerous. Should the current rates hold, it amounts to an extra trillion dollars in interest payments over the next decade. Why is this debt a problem now? Because historically America has paid for all debt by issuing new debt in the form of treasury securities. It's a workable strategy so long as people want to buy those securities. But going forward, the US account, uh, the US cannot take for granted that investors will want to buy them in such volume at or the premium they currently do today around 30 percent of u.s treasury securities are held by foreign governments or investors that percentage will likely go down as more countries build their own capital markets and invest domestically i think believes the ballooning debt represents a real threat to the country's fiscal future can you imagine the U.S. printing $34 trillion to cover its debt? They wouldn't. They can't. That would be ridiculous. I mean, the, the value of the U.S. dollar would drop so drastically, it would completely disappear. Um, and it would have to cease to be uh, a, a reserve currency. So, for all these reasons, this is why people flock to things like Bitcoin. Because it's easier accessible. Uh, it is a brand new technology something that the old folks do not grasp like peter schiff and um, warren buffett although i think warren buffett may have changed his tune as well a little bit and i personally am not a huge proponent of bitcoin that is not the point the bitcoin uh, is basically what drives the whole market if bitcoin wasn't there people would be flocking to other crypto assets i mean mainly probably to uh, stupid meme coins until they get rock pulled and and learn but there is litecoin there is monero there um there are other cryptocurrencies out there that do the same thing as bitcoin it just so happens that bitcoin does lead the market and so we look at it as the king of crypto and the leader of the market but it's not the only one if bitcoin disappeared there'd be other cryptocurrencies that uh, would replace it very quickly because people want it because people there's enough people to support it and enough people to push this technology forward because they see it as valuable unlike 
people like Peter Schiff who are stuck in the past and don't understand digital um, existence, the digital world. And so to that end, we're looking at the crypto market cap of uh, $2.8 trillion, which is 100 uh, billion above the, I guess, couple of weeks high of $2.7 trillion. We've got 71 billion in trading volume, which is going down slightly. I guess people are huddling rather than uh, trading. Everything's green this week. Bitcoin's sitting uh, comfortably at 70,000. Ethereum climbed back up to 3600 dollars Solana just breached $200. I saw somewhere it retraced a little bit, so it's a bouncy little experience for Solana. BNB is at $600, yo. Wow, Cardano 64. Cardano is struggling as always. Dogecoin 25% over. Cardano basically was uh, dethroned by Dogecoin and it feels like it's going to get dethroned by Avalanche. Polkadot struggles to break past 10. Polygon is on the verge of breaking through $1.99. 99.79. Wow. Litecoin at $104. Litecoin is having a nice pump here from whatever price that was um, and everything else is looking pretty green this week and so this is the present situation uh, while the baby boomers some of them may be listening to Peter Schiff and Peter Schiff is desperately grabbing you know to to maintain value of the assets that he holds dear and near to his heart the new age is coming Peter, um, one that you obviously do not understand and uh, one that will replace the old age in which gold and and other assets dominated the space because apparently there is a new king in the house uh, and it's Bitcoin and of course blockchain leads the way and uh, blah bitty blah whoopie dee boo if you feel generous and you want to support the channel make sure to join and become a crypto kitten or a crypto cat i'd appreciate the hell out of you but also more importantly smash up the like subscribe to the channel of course share the content with everybody else and i will see you tomorrow in the next video of the week Peace.